Hello everyone, welcome to the TriStar Gym channel. Today we're going to be doing the pre-fight analysis for Johnny Hendricks versus uh, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. So I'm going to be answering your questions and comments as usual and I'm going to be giving you my opinion on the fight. Okay, so the first question we have or comment here is from Our Lucid Dream. I think Stephen Wonderboy Thompson will be able to edge out the first two rounds, but this being a five-round fight now change, changes everything. Johnny Hendricks will win via dry hump decision. Now... <laughs> Winning via dry hump decision is a possibility. We all know Johnny's a great wrestler. Um, I like the five rounds actually for Wonder Boy. So I think Johnny Hendricks could, in a three round fight, could smother Steven a lot easier than a five round fight. And I think in a five round fight, it helps the striker because it forces the wrestler to get so many more takedowns. Things start to get sweaty and it, and it makes it harder for the takedowns. Plus the striker has more time and more chances to land one on your chin, okay? so. Uh, Steven obviously wants to connect on the chin of Johnny Hendricks. That's his way to win. You know, he's not going to take Hendricks down and look for submissions. It's possible he can catch a guillotine or whatnot, but the, his main, his best ways to win is to connect on the chin of Johnny Hendricks, hurt Johnny, and win the striking or knock him out, you know. And uh, I like that five rounds for Steven. So I would have to disagree with you on this one. Um, a three-round fight would be more beneficial for the wrestler. Um, they have to do. They have. They need less takedowns to win, and um, <clears throat> they they don't they don't the fight the striker doesn't get stood up two extra times like you would in a five round fight. Okay, so that's my comment there. Next one. This is from MMA Picks. For us, do you ever bet on MMA for fun? In in my opinion, it's the best sport to bet on. I couldn't dream of getting the same returns if I bet anything else. No, actually, I don't bet. I think betting is crazy. I, I think it's a horrible way to try to make money. You know, it's not a great business plan. I know a few people get rich off it, but in the long run, the vast majority of people lose, and even experts cannot uh, predict uh, reliably who will win. So I think betting is a it's a dangerous game, so I would avoid it at all costs. It's addictive, et cetera, and most people, not all, but most people go broke from betting. Well, I shouldn't say they go broke. They lose. You know, most people in the long run will lose money when it comes to betting. So next question or comment. Uh, Anirudha Sharma, you are one of the best coaches in the world for teaching tactics and strategy, and you have experience in training fighters for sapas, particularly this sapa. Having observed Wonderboy's style, what would you say would be the best approach to beating Hendrix? Bait Hendrix to circle to his right hand, then hit him with his signature roundhouse kick. And subsequently, what do you think would be Hendrix's best tactic against Wonderboy? Well, for sure, I think you know, Wonder Boy's best way to win is striking, right? Cre create a distance between him and Johnny. He has a far superior reach to Johnny. Johnny's a very powerful, but limited in range. You know, he doesn't have a lot of uh, reach. He's great at closing distance. You know, when, when you see Johnny Hendricks blitz, he, he comes in with his head moving. He comes in throwing really, really hard shots. So he, he has a particular way, but the way he moves by swinging his head, I think Steven's going to move at the same rate, because don't, don't forget, you know, Steven's an incredible striker. And I've trained for Steve, with Steven for years. We brought him up to TriStar many times for George's fights. And, and I mean, he stayed with us for months at a time. I know him very, very well. He is a superb striker. Now, if this was a straight kickboxing match, I, I, would, I would double down. You know, I said betting is a bad idea, but that's the time you want to double down on Wonderboy. You know, he's going to win that fight. He's 65-0 and 0 or 67-0 and 0 in kickboxing. He's seen what Johnny Hendricks brings to the table in the past. You know, he's seen that kind of striker in the past. It's not the striking the problem. The only way I think Hend uh, Hendricks could win or land big strikes standing up is if he fatigues Wonderboy with takedowns. If Wonderboy is so worried about the takedown that he's getting faked out with the takedown and into strikes. I don't see Johnny Hendricks going into striking mode and really beating Steven Wonderboy up. I think it can happen. You know, it's a, it's a low percentage possibility of course anybody can connect a shot there's it's always probability but steven has the longer reach he has more experience standing up he's more he's more calm standing up he, he's not going to be as frantic he's going to pick his shots he's not going to waste any energy he's going to be more precise he's going to hit harder he, he he's just a superb superb striker he's going to win, win win that realm only way he'll lose that realm you know, the, the striking realm, the only way he'll lose that is if he's getting taken down or and then he's got to worry about the takedowns and the strikes. And all of a sudden, Johnny Hendricks is faking a takedown and going into strikes or, or Wonder Boy is too preoccupied w about worrying about the takedowns and those strikes will start connecting. But if this was a straight up 
striking match, Wonder Boy wins nine, 99 times out of 100. But it's not. It's MMA. So I think Johnny will do a good job uh, closing the distance. And he'll do like he did with Condit. You know, when he got close to Condit's legs, he just grabbed those legs and, and just chucked them in the air. And he got on top of Condit. And he did it over and over again. And he did a great job in that fight. I think, uh, I think he lost round three versus Condit. So if he loses round three with Wonder Boy, and then round four comes around and he's not, you know, he's not able to keep up the pace he had in round one and round two. We all know he's been dieting more. We all know he's going to come in lighter than ever. If he doesn't have that power and muscle with him in round four and five, Wonder Boy will knock him out, you know. And, and Wonder Boy is a dangerous, dangerous striker. Now, I know sometimes we've seen Wonder Boy maybe fighting and you think, you know, he, he, he's, not, he's not fighting aggressively or whatnot. He is studying you. Wonder Boy is a superb striker. If he's not in your face throwing a million punches, it's not because he's being passive. It's because he's calculating what he's about to do. He's getting a good look at you. He's seeing what speed you have. He's seeing what power you have. He's seeing how you move, and he's going to clip you. He's going to clip you down the line. I think, Stephen, the more time there is in a fight, if this was a 20-round 20 20 round fight or a 100-round fight, you know that just keeps upping the chances of Wonder Boy winning. I think the more time this fight goes, the more chances Wonder Boy has to win. The only way uh, that won't be true is if Johnny exhausts him with the wrestling, just ties up to him, takes him down, beats him up on the ground. I think then, yeah, he can he can really fatigue like like Brown did. You know, Brown was able to clinch a lot with Wonder Boy, wrestle him, and then just Wonder Boy was exhausted. You know, from all that wrestling, he couldn't get into his kickboxing gear. Um, I don't know if this will happen in this fight because Wonder Boy's been wrestling so much now. He's been doing so much jiu-jitsu. He's going to be hard to fatigue. So I'm really interested to see if Wonder Boy can keep the takedowns at bay and just pick apart Johnny Hendricks. It's going to be the challenge for sure. Next question. Akeem Wood. Hendricks seems to have turned into just a wrestler, wrestler recently. He was actually outstriking Lawler pretty well, pretty well in their last fight, but kept going for unsuccessful takedowns. I think that sort of approach would be actually wise in this fight. Terrible plan against Lawler, who is very hard to take down. I think Hendricks will re wrestle Wonderboy to a decision or wrestle him and tire him out for a late TKO. That is possible. You know, If he wrestles him and tires him out, he could get a TKO. That is possible. And that is definitely the ticket for Hendricks. I think if Hendricks goes in there just trying to strike, he will lose. I think he will lose. You know, He could land a big shot. He's a powerful guy and, and steal it maybe. You know, Ellenberger landed a good shot and dropped Wonder Boy, and that's something I didn't think would, would happen. But again, it's just a it's not because it's a low probable that it'll never happen. You know, you, you fight for a long time, you're gonna get caught on the chin. It's just it's a matter of time before you get caught on the chin. So for me, Hendrix is key. He's gotta wrestle. We all know it. There are no secrets. It's wrestler versus striker. Now the other question is will he be able to do it for five rounds without getting caught on the butt button? That's the big question. That's why we're gonna tune in and, and watch. So I agree with you. That is the strategy for Hendricks. No doubt about it. EMCC. Who's the top three kickers in the UFC? And who is the most underrated kicker? I think Wonderboy is the best kicker next to Barboza. I think McGregor is underrated at kicking. And I think Wonderboy will win via spinning shit. Well, yeah, maybe. You know, Wonderboy is really good at that spinning stuff, you know. But you, you got to be unpredictable with that because you don't want to get taken down. You know, when you spin and stuff too often... You get taken down. Who are the top three kickers in UFC? Well, that's a, that's a tough question. A lot of good kickers. I would have put. I like. I like. I like your list. I think Barboza, McGregor, Wonderboy. Those guys are within definitely the top three, uh, are are or the top three. But I would throw Pettis in there. I think he's a phenomenal kicker, and um, you know it's hard to narrow it down to three. I would have to think about it. Really, I don't know if I, I'd have to think about it. I'd have to think about it. But Pettis' name would be in the running for sure. And uh, definitely McGregor's a great kicker. Wonderboy, absolutely. Barboza, he's the only guy to ever win two fights in UFC via leg kicks. So he, he's definitely up there as well. Next comment or question, CK B Bandits. Faraz, what's your thoughts on Hendrick's strongman training? And as well as strongman training in general for MMA, for the lighter divisions and heavyweight divisions. Thanks in advance. Well, I like strongman training. I think strongman training is excellent. I don't know if you guys ever seen the one strongman tournament tournament where Lou Ferrigno, a famous bodybuilder, if you guys don't know who he is, he played the Hulk in the, the original series, a massive man. He was in the documentary Pumping Iron with, with Arnold Schwarzenegger. He was a massive human being, incredibly muscular. Um, he, he did a strongman tournament and lost. I mean, he came in last place, and that just shows that a lot of what people do in, in, in the gym and in, the, in the weight room doesn't necessarily translate to real-world real world strength. Now, of course, 
uh, when you do strongman training, for those of you who are not uh, familiar with, with it, it's, it has a lot of different events, but the training is like picking up stones instead of picking up weights. It's, uh, you know, pulling buses, it's pushing cars, it's flipping tires, it's carrying yokes, it's, it's got all sorts of crazy uh, farmer's walks, and all sorts of crazy events that are very real world uh, type related. So for sure, when you do stuff like that, like picking up sandbags and stuff like that, the the stabilizers are more are act are far more activated and if you guys haven't heard the term you're only as strong as your weakest link you know if you think about a chain and one of the chains chain links is very weak of course the chain will only be as strong as that weakest link so if that weak link can only carry 100 pounds of pressure it, it'll break at 100 so it doesn't matter if all the other links can withstand 500 pounds your chain is your chain is going to break at 100 pounds so what are the what are the most important muscles in your body it's the stabilizers because you have you have two major muscle groups in your body okay so you have the stabilizers and you have the prime movers now the prime movers are what do the heavy lifting so if you're going to lift a heavy stone th those are the big the big chains that are going to lift but if you have to stabilize that weight which is the case in real fighting you have to stabilize your partner as you lift them up there are muscles that are just meant to keep the joint aligned now if those muscles fail because they're a lot weaker than the prime movers. So if the, if the weight you're lifting is very shaky. If those mus muscles fail, there's a reflex in the brain that shuts your prime mover off. Okay? So you won't be able to lift more than what your prime mover allows you to lift. So if Hendrix is doing a lot of strong man training, I think it is very wise of him. Look for him to be stronger than usual. Look for him to have more power than usual. But of course, he's losing a lot more weight. And you, when you lose a lot of weight, you know, one thing you guys might not know, I've seen Johnny Hendrix in person on fight night. I mean, he's huge. I think when he fought George, they were, they were saying, their camp was saying he was 205, you know, George was 185 the day of the fight. So that's trim. If he was 205, I mean, that is, that is a 20 pound weight advantage. That's, that is huge. You know, could you imagine fighting a guy 20 pounds heavier than you? That is a major, major difference. So, I mean, if he's cutting a lot of weight and he's not coming in that big, I don't think he's going to be as powerful as usual. But if he's rectifying it with strongman training, I think it would be wise. It might be a smart, smart choice. The, the bottom line is we don't know until we see him fight. We haven't seen, you know, when, when you change so many key variables like this, we don't know what to expect. You know, he might know because he's seeing his performance in sparring. Now, of course, he's going to report to us that he's the best ever and that he's stronger than ever. And he's having great rounds. Every fighter does. You know, if fighters who are having horrible rounds in practice, they don't go in their interviews and say, oh, I'm looking horrible in practice. I'm getting tired in one round and I'm weaker than ever. They don't do that. They're always going to give you some kind of positive positive feedback there so i don't make too much of interviews you know if i didn't get to see you spar i didn't see you in action i didn't see the improvements i don't know until fight night so i'm not part of his camp i can't tell you but definitely drastic weight cuts have made a difference in the past and strongman training is great if you guys do strongman training i think you are very wise the only thing with strongman training is you have to know how to do it properly there are techniques to lifting rocks there are techniques to lifting heavy sandbags you can injure yourself so make sure you find a, a good strongman mentor before you go in and, and start doing these techniques alignment is key when doing strongman training because you will hurt your back biceps shoulders etc if you don't know how to do the proper technique next one mma boxing talk will thompson be able to use his range and striking skills to keep hendrix from taking him down i believe so i believe he's gonna have some success with that how much of that success we're gonna find out saturday i believe that if hendrix comes in lighter than usual and now there's no uh, more rehydration, uh, you know, there's no more IV bags and all that, it's going to hurt him, you know, it's going to hurt him, I don't think we're going to see as strong as a Johnny Hendricks as we usually do, you know, he's not able to, to maybe rehydrate as, as much, or he can't bounce back as high, I think that's going to be a huge advantage to Wonder, for Stephen Wonderboy, I don't think Stephen Wonderboy is the biggest welterweight out there, but if they're both even in size, if the size advantage is not in Hendrix's favor. If they're equal in size, I think I think Wonder Boy is going to do a phenomenal job, and he's going to surprise a lot of people. Wonder Boy is one of the most precise strikers on the face of the earth. So my only my only reservation is can he can he uh, keep it in the striking realm comfortably enough to do his job, or is he going to be so worried about the takedowns that he won't be able to, you know, concentrate on on putting one a clean shot on Johnny Hendrix's chin. And, and make no mistake about it, Wonder Boy is a hard hitter. I've sparred with him myself. Uh, I've seen him spar hundreds, you know, of minutes, and I've watched him a lot. We've trained together a lot. He, and I've seen it almost, you know, I've seen so many of his fights outside of MMA. Outside of MMA, I've seen his kickboxing fights. I was the one who 
really got interested in him. Wonder Boy, I saw him fighting in Montreal. He fought a professional kickboxing match in Montreal. I was extremely impressed with him. He hits hard and he hits precise. And his timing is phenomenal. So I know Johnny's got a great chin. I know he's never been knocked out, but he's also never fought a guy like Wonder Boy. So I think Johnny is a powerful guy as well. He's got a great He's got a great chin, so there's so many variables. Nobody really knows what it's going to look like to put these two beasts together. So I'm going to be tuning in. Actually, I'm actually going to be there. I'm going to be watching. This is an exciting fight. Definitely Manador versus the Bull, Striker versus the Wrestler. This fight is going to be a, it's going to be an interesting, interesting dynamic. Um, curious Guns. How does Steven Thompson fare in the pocket? Haven't really seen seen either of the fighters all that much but considering johnny's size and reach i assume his main strategy will be to close the distance and fight in the pocket which might nullify thompson's long long kicks and straights yes well you know in kickboxing you know wonder boy comes from karate comes from kickboxing there is no infighting in kickboxing you know there might be a little bit here and there for a second or two but there's not much and i don't think wonder boy does any infighting i've trained with him for a long time i said like i told you and, and i've never seen him do infighting his father actually, you know, we used to go to the boxing gym. We used to bring Wonder Boy with us. And his father actually doesn't like just boxing, straight boxing training. He doesn't like the range. He doesn't like to be inside the pocket. He didn't want to train his son to be inside the pocket. You know, where I felt that you have to have some comfort there because sometimes fighters will take you there and you have to be competent enough to, be, to, to, to not get destroyed in that realm and then bring the fight back to where you need to go. But... Wonder Boy is very difficult to draw into the pocket. I, and, I, and I've seen him spar with world champion boxers and have amazing rounds. I mean, he can fight. He could fight anywhere, Steven. But that's not his style. So look for him to keep Johnny Hendricks outside. Johnny Hendricks will not be the first guy to try to get inside on Steven and make him fight in the pocket. And don't forget that. You know, Steven's fought short, stocky, powerful punchers in the past. But, and you know, I would consider uh, Ellenberger to be very similar to, the, to that, you know. I mean, what did he do with Ellenberger? He kept Ellenberger on the outside. He uses a lot of um, uh, beautiful kicks to set up strikes and strikes to set up kicks. He did what Wonderboy does. Is it easy to get Wonderboy in the pocket? No, it's not easy. That is going to be a big challenge for Johnny Hendricks. But you're right. If Johnny Hendricks does not get in the pocket, I think his strikes will be very ineffective. He needs to get on the inside, absolutely. Next, Mr. Guts. How can Wonder Boy make this into a brawl? Like I just said, Wonder Boy does not want to make this into a brawl. That would be more of what Johnny Hendricks is looking to do. Uh, Johnny Hendricks needs to make Wonder Boy miss as he breaks the distance. Wonder Boy is very good at stepping back and landing a shot at the same time. So look for that. I think he's going to connect a few times with with uh, Hendricks, and I think Hendricks has to threaten that takedown nonstop through through this fight. Is he in shape enough? Did the weight cut hurt him? Because if those takedowns start getting predictable and Wonder Boy deflects them and shuts them down, Wonder Boy is going to pick him apart for five rounds. And Wonder Boy can strike for five rounds, no question about it. And I know Johnny Hendricks can wrestle for five rounds, but the weight cut issue is on Johnny Hendricks' side. If Johnny Hendricks fatigues in the least, he will lose. So let's see. Is he, is he, is he lighter than usual because he's in the best shape of his life? Or is it because he's been cutting calories and, and you know, you know, when you cut a lot of calories, you guys might not know this, but your body can start chewing up your muscle. It's called going into a catabolic state. Now, if you go into a catabolic state for too long, you lose a lot of muscle. And if you lose a lot of muscle, you lose a lot of your skill. You know, if you lose 10 pounds of muscle, that's bad. If you lose 10 pounds of fat, that's good. So I'm sure Johnny lost some fat. Definitely, you know, he looks more shredded. But he might have lost, who knows, if he lost a lot of muscle, has he been able to keep it on? It's a tricky thing when you're cutting your calories... It's a tricky thing not to lose your muscle. You know, that's a tricky thing. That's why you need an expert working with you. And um, if you do lose your muscle, you'll know it. In practice, you'll get tired faster. You'll start breathing heavy when you, when you spar. You'll start feeling a lot of acidity in your muscles. Uh, that's all signs that your, your diet's not right, you know, and you're in a catabolic state. You'll also feel weaker, you know, obviously. You know, you're losing muscle. You're going to try to double leg a guy and they're going to feel too strong. You know, they're going to feel like they're, they're deflecting you. Things that used to work don't work anymore. And that's a major, major factor. So I think all those answers will be will be answered late in round one. If this fight goes late into round one and they kind of grind it out, we'll know is Johnny Hendricks in great shape or not. We'll know if it, after round one. In round two, it'll be clear as day, of course. But by the, it's, it's hard to say in the first two, three minutes. I think it's the later, the last minute you see, is he still pushing? Is, is his reflexes still there? You know, if they're clinching, is he keeping up with the pace? 
diet is huge guys diet is huge it can affect your training can affect your performance so lots to be seen this weekend next one oh i think okay no here we go next one uh this guy's name is a jumble of letters hi faraz is it easier to defend takedowns with a traditional martial arts stance i would say no i would say no if you're in a traditional bladed stance your legs wide it's an easy single leg and single legs can turn into double legs so technically i would say no it's good for certain things bad for certain things and it's it's good for different types of kicks and strikes bad for takedowns so i would say no next question do you think hendrix will be able to use his power against thompson um if he gets within range and, and closes him off in the octagon yes but closing somebody off in an octagon is actually harder than doing it in a ring because in the ring the corner is sharper right the angle is sharper so it's more of a a trap there it's easier to push somebody in the corner and, and beat them up in the octagon the corners are the angles are far wider so wonder boy is so good you know he spent his uh, you know 65 fights not getting tied up in corners so for him the octagon is just it's just an easier environment for him not to get caught up against the cage or in a, in a corner you know the corner of the octagons are, are so wide they're, they're barely corners so i think it's going to be a difficult job and plus there's two extra rounds so i really hope you know, of course, I'm pulling for Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, guys. I'm very biased. I love the guy. He's, he's like a family member to me. I know him well. I know his family well. We spend a tremendous amount of time together. So for me, I'm pulling for the Thompson family, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, 100%. And I think that the two extra rounds is, is really good for Stephen. Now, the only way I think Johnny Hendricks wins, really, his best strategy would be to tire Thompson out early, like grind him out and, and fatigue him so that he can't strike. You know, kind of do what with Travis with with uh, Brown did. So if if he does what Brown did, yeah, he can he can edge out a victory, uh, a, a decision. I don't think he can finish Wonder Boy. I'll be honest with you, I don't think he can finish Wonder Boy on the ground standing up. Wonder Boy is gonna be very difficult to finish. You know, it'd have to be one of those first ten seconds of the match, a huge punch, cut Thompson, which I think is very unlikely, not impossible, very unlikely. But after that. That nervous energy in the first few minutes, two, three minutes of the fight, I don't think he can finish Wonder Boy. You know, if you look at Johnny Hendricks statistically, I mean, all his knockouts came in round one except for one fight where he knocked out uh, Charlie Brenneman. He knocked out Charlie Brenneman and, uh, in the second round, early in the second round. So, And he's a very he was probably the smallest welterweight of all time, uh, Charlie Brenneman. So, you know, there was an exception there. But after round one, I don't think he knocks out Steven. And I don't think in round one he does knock out Steven. So... And on the ground, you know, we've never seen Johnny finish anybody, I don't think. So I don't think he finishes Thompson. I think the only guy who could really finish this fight is Thompson himself. Um, the only way I could see Johnny finishing this fight is if he tires Thompson out and keeps working, working, and gets a TKO. But again, I find that to be very unlikely. Next one, J24 Music. Hi, Faraz. How much do you think this short notice extension from three rounds to five rounds will affect the outcome of this fight? I think it will change the outcome of this fight. I think it favors Thompson. I don't know if it would change the outcome of this fight, but I think it heavily favors Thompson. Hendricks has to get make more takedowns. He's lighter than ever. He might have less endurance. I'm not sure. But the best thing of all is it gives it gives Thompson two more tries at stand-up. So if he gets taken down one, two, and three, you know, if he gets taken down, put on his back, he'll still get two extra tries in a five-round fight. And all he has to do is connect a clean shot, you know. So I think it heavily favors the striker. The more rounds, the more the strikers have an advantage to win. Uh, the Wizard Hall. Do you think Wonderboy can keep the distance with Hendricks, considering his pressure? Um, that is the that is the question of this fight. You hit the nail on the head. Can he keep the distance? If this fight is fought at distance, it will be Wonderboy all the way. If this fight is fought at distance, Wonderboy is going to win. He's going to pick apart Hendricks and beat him up. Can he do it? I think so. I think so. It's not going to be easy. Hendricks has really good head movement. And as he's moving his head, he's throwing bombs. So you, you're worried about those bombs, and you're also trying to tag him at the same time. It's a tricky thing. I think Steven's going to start slow. He's going to study Hendrix. I think there's going to be some clinching. I don't think Johnny's. I don't think Johnny's going to get easy takedowns. He might get a few, but of course, I'm very biased, guys. I'm, I'm pro Stephen Tom, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. I'm polling for him 100%. Um, so I'm, I'm going with Steven all the way. I think he's going to fend off takedowns. He might get taken down once, twice, but I don't think Hendricks will take him down repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. I don't think it's going to happen. I, I sincerely hope not, and I think when the boy is going to run run with it. You know, He's going to stay in the center of the octagon. He's going to move around, and he will pick apart Hendricks. Tough job, but I think it's possible. 
vaginal passions. Is Stephen Thompson training with Chris Weidman going to be enough to stop the wrestling of Johnny Hendricks? If there is one guy to train with for Johnny Hendricks, to prep for Johnny Hendricks, I know he's not a softball guy, but Chris Weidman is such a relentless, high-pressure fighter with amazing takedowns that if Steven's training with, and he is training with Chris on a regular basis, he will evolve, and he will evolve to learn to beat guys like Johnny Hendricks. Now, some of you are going to be like, yeah, but he's a softball. Steven has sparred and and fought many, many Sapas. To him, to Steven Wonderboy, Sapa or not doesn't make a difference. And I don't know if you guys notice this, but Steven changes stance as he's fighting. For him, he could fight righty, he can fight lefty. To him, he probably won't even recognize it if the guy's in a Sapa stance. He, he, not that he won't recognize it, he won't care. He won't care if you're Sapa or righty. Steven does not care. Uh, Mayweather does not care if you're a righty or a Sapa. John Jones does not care. If you're a righty or a sapa, you've seen so many sapas in your life. It doesn't matter. It's not even a factor to you. You fight the same. You fight. You know. You fight as comfortable. Steven is at that level. He doesn't care if Johnny's a sapa. What he cares about is pressure, takedowns, and the mixture of striking to takedowns. And that's what Chris Weidman brings to the table. And uh, Chris Weidman is just you know when you when you hit him, it's like a it's like a tennis ball bouncing off a you know, bouncing off a wall. He's very, very tough and durable. So Johnny Hendricks is the same way. I think Thompson got a lot of great uh, looks from Chris Weidman that he's going to see in this fight. Plus, Weidman has a longer reach, you know, so it's going to be an, uh, an easier time, I think, with Johnny Hendricks because of the reach. Reach is huge. And Wonderboy, when he's got the reach, man, he's got your number. So let's see what he can do with that reach. Can he? The, the, the only X factor is that wrestling. That's the wrestling. That's what's going to change this fight if Johnny Hendricks wins. Vladimir Kozar Kozirev. Hi, Faraz. Thank you for doing this. Do you expect this fight to go five rounds? Yes, I do. I do expect this fight to go five rounds. If it ends earlier than that, it's going to be from Wonder Boy. I think it's going to be five rounds. I think, I think these two guys are very durable. They're both very hard to finish. I do think there could be a finish. Don't get me wrong. But I do also see this possibly going for five rounds. Wonder Boy, he's fought many times. He's ready to do five rounds. Hendricks, he's fought many times. He's done five rounds many times. These guys at this level, they've pushed in, you know, for having so many wrestling matches, having so many striking matches, you know how to push your body. You will not get tired. So, yes, I do think this, this will go five rounds. Oscar Montez, I love karate, so I'm going with my boy Thompson. I agree with you, my friend. I'm with you 100%. Next one. Uh, Zar AK four seven one four seven one yeah, mirror mirror of Alves Pettis fight lay and pray wall and stall I'm not going against that per se it makes sense seeing uh, it makes sense seeing as a loss will hurt Hendricks much more than Thompson if Hendricks loses he won't see the top ten in a while since as the UFC brass seems not to like him much um, yeah it could be lay and pray wall and stall man it's very possible you know I hope it's not. But definitely very possible. Now, don't forget, if you guys remember, you said Pettis versus Alvarez fight. Look how tired Alvarez looked in round three. Now, all, all due respect, you know, I like Alvarez. I'm a big fan of Alvarez, but he looked tired. You know, he looked more tired than Pettis. If Pettis had a round four and five, who knows how it would have played out. Uh, D. Fotis, how do you think Johnny will approach trying to close the distance on his tall striking based opponent? He's going to move his head, throw bombs. He's going to swing for the fences, as he's moving his head, throw bombs, he's going to grab those legs, he's going to try to rip them up to the ceiling, watch Hendricks versus, um, um, watch Hendricks versus Condit, I think that's what he's going to try to do. Okay, everyone, this will be the last one, so uh, this one is from SBD Wisp, this is a simple question with, a pos with, possible not a, with possibly not a simple answer, what have you seen from Wonderboy's grappling improvement that can make you believe he will be able to deal with Hendricks' wrestling? Yeah, if Wonderboy gets stuck on the ground, I mean, he's been working a lot with uh, Ryan Hall in the last couple of years as well. So he's been working with Chris Weidman and Ryan Hall. As we know, Ryan Hall is one of the greatest jiu-jitsu practitioners out there. So, And he has a lot of experience in MMA, as you both know. He just won the Ultimate Fighter uh, finale recently, and uh, his jiu-jitsu is, is primo. You know, So Wonderboy, he might have some new tricks up his sleeve. I haven't worked with Wonderboy on the ground in a long time. I haven't, I haven't rolled with him or, or sparred with him in a long time. So... I really believe he's made a huge gains in there because he's a wise guy. He knows people want to put him on his back. And uh, I expect, you know, I'm looking forward like you guys. I haven't seen the, I haven't rolled him in a long time. So I'm pretty sure, though, I'm very confident that he's been doing his homework. He's a very uh, intelligent guy. So I think we're going to see some new things. But the best 
you know, the best way for him to go about it is not get taken down at all. So if he does get taken down, I think he'll use that. He'll, he'll use his jitsu to get back to his feet, maybe even uh, just to survive the round, not get too tired. And then the, when the round ends, they start you back up. You know, they start you back up on your feet. So Wonder Boy will have five attempts, I think, in this fight or the potential of five attempts to to connect one of those strikes on Johnny Hendricks. I think that's a lot of a tries for a guy of the level of, of Wonder Boy. So again, guys, I'm very biased. I'm very pro Wonder Boy. He's a good friend of mine, and uh, I'm rooting for him. I hope you guys are as well. This is the last question, so this brings us to the end of another episode. Please make sure to like, share, and comment as always, and I thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you.